violinist who plays contemporary music a lot. Yes. Uh, you played the Esa Pekka Salonen concerto, also this Luca Francesconi concerto, but not all players can do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. It depends what you want to do, really. Um, it depends what your aesthetic is and what excites you. Um, when you hear something new, um, something spontaneous, something unexpected, um, this is what's very exciting for me, to do something that's more unusual, uh, to do something that's sort of daring the audience um, to listen in a different way. Um, there's so many different ways that someone can listen to a piece of music, uh, but I think it's pretty true that most audience members are used to listening to things that they are familiar with, um, something that they know uh, music that uh, music a piece that they know that they're looking forward to hearing is maybe specific parts uh, they feel very sentimental about or very bring back a memory or something like this. This is one way of listening, uh, but another way of listening is completely the opposite in that you sit and you don't know what you're going to hear next, um, and it's a journey that you're going to go on and you don't know where it's going to take you. Uh, but this actually, I think, is um, the most exciting. Um, and to hear and be open, to have sounds just kind of come to you and you, you see how you feel when you, when you hear them. And it's, it's not always about necessarily enjoyment or, dare I say, the, the word relaxation, God forbid. Um, it's more just about having the experience. True. But you cannot start a career by just playing new music, right? I think not. I mean, certainly wasn't the case with me. I mean, from my teens, I was playing standard repertoire. Uh, but my whole um, fascination was always going towards the newer. Um, so even while I was learning the standard rep, I was sort of already trying to kind of start to go in this direction. and. Now I'm truly happy because I feel like I can just do really the music that I want to play. But do you still want to play the old classics like Mendelssohn, Schumann? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and that has nothing to do with my respect for the compositions, not at all. It's just knowing myself and knowing what makes me happiest and knowing that I have something unusual, and something more unique and sort of rare to offer um, and that the majority almost all of my repertoire is stuff that's been written for me or music of composers that I think need more attention for example um, Brent Roy Zimmerman um, composers like this uh, so I feel like there's so many fantastic colleagues of mine that will go and play more of the standard works that will let me focus on the other things You gave the premiere of Luca Francesconi's concerto yes. we're here, hearing this week. What was the genesis of the concerto? Well, Duende. Uh, Duende, the dark notes. He wanted to write about a piece um, that has this Duende. And Duende is this, um, they're sort of different definitions of Duende. Um, but I think the one that he was looking for was this incredibly intense, um, unaware sort of fire that overcomes the personality, the spirit, um, that overwhelms and takes over. So when you see the flamenco dancers, they have just, they're taken by the rhythm and they're in the zone of this fiery performance and they're not thinking about anything except the feeling of the performance. They're not even aware that they're thinking about the feeling. It's just there, and it's just, um, it's taken everything over. Uh, and, and this is the, the beautiful, um, ritualistic, sort of um, magical um, embodiment of, um, and it takes, just completely takes you over. Um, so um, to write a piece about that 
and the dark notes. It's sort of like a magic in it. Sometimes it's very dark magic, um, but sometimes it's also very um, ethereal and light. And it takes you all the way from like the most ethereal to the absolute most guttural um, feelings and sounds. So it's, um, it's a very magical, very uh, black magic piece. You met with Francis Kone, like Many times. Five yes. years ago when you decided to commission a piece, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, about that. Maybe a little bit more, but yes. <laughs> Did you have any say about... He wanted, it was, it was fantastic. We had many meetings over Skype. He wanted to understand a lot of the harmonics on the instrument, how they work, which overtones are on which string, um, what kind of sounds I can make. Just he wanted something that was totally the least cliche, um, the least um, violinistic, um, anti-Paganini, um, but incredibly virtuosic. And this is very difficult to do. When you set your mind to it, um, the violin technique is sort of built, um, traditionally built, on some of these um, more violinistic gestures. And this is something he wanted to completely break away from. Um, so we did a lot of work on that. Um, and just completely otherworldly sounds that's possible to make um, on the violin. He was also very fascinated with gypsy music and the techniques that the violinists, um, the chimbun player, the different players of this kind of gypsy band, what they sound like. And one of the middle movements of this piece, he turns the entire orchestra into uh, this crazy gypsy band. If you have any requests for your own technique, like right up passage that, that I can show off my <laughs> finger dexterity. <laughs> um, well, I didn't really have to say that because it was in there. <laughs> um, we did work on certain practicalities, um, just in terms of how to fit these sounds together. Um, but his imagination is incredible. Uh, there is no composer that has an imagination like <laughs> Mr. Luca here. Okay. Hey.